Good morning, everyone. How are you all doing this morning? God remains good, isn't it? Even when the circumstances are not, he remains the same. It's not amazing that we serve an unshakable God, unchangeable God. He remains the same. The circumstances may change, but your destiny, the promises he has for you, remains the same. He just put you back in the trap. He helps you, and he uses all the circumstances for your sake, for the glory of his name. We are about to celebrate Christmas. We are about exactly uh, around one week before celebrating Christmas. And when we think about Jesus coming, and we think about we receive a Savior, but not only a Savior, we receive a Master, a Teacher, an example to follow. When we keep our eyes on Jesus and we keep walking in obedience, when we keep our eyes in Jesus, we will not perish. So it's not about a baby being born. It's not only about a Savior, but it's about a helper every day. Psalm 46 says, He is a proven help in a time of trouble. He is an ever-present help in time of trouble, which means if you are facing trouble right now, if you are facing any kind of trouble right now, his presence is right there with you to comfort you, to guide you, to lead you, to heal you, to hold your hands. Yes, he is our Savior and Lord, but he is also our best friend in a time of trouble. I don't know if your heart is feeling alone today. I don't know if your heart is feeling so desperate today. But the presence of Jesus, it's right there with you. And he is your living hope. So my prayer today is that by the power of the Holy Spirit, his presence will be revealed to you. And you will not leave this place in the same way you came. But you will be touched by his presence. You will be transformed by it. I'm not in my best voice today. I need the mic. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Being gracious, Father, everything comes. Praise your name this morning. We lift high above our circumstances, high above our pain, high above our doubts, Lord. We exalt you, Lord. And I pray that the more we worship you, Lord, allow the weight of your glory to fall in this place. Lord, I pray you come with comfort towards those who need comfort. You come with healing towards those who need healing. You come with guidance towards those who need guidance, Lord. Allow your presence to reign in this place, Lord, and allow your children to experience your power. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I have a couple of announcements before we worship. Next Sunday, it's Christmas Eve service, so come and join us. Invite a friend, come and join us. Let's worship the King. Let's celebrate our Savior. And come and be prepared because I know the kids will be surprising you with a special deal Sunday morning. So just come, bring, you the, bring the kids too, and let's celebrate, okay? We have the connection card, so if you are new here today, if you are visiting, please fill the connection card. And uh, if you need a prayer today, if you need prayers, we would like to pray for you. So you write down your prayer request, and the pastors and, and our team will be praying for you. Amen? May the Lord guide you today. In Jesus' name, amen.
morning. Would you stand with us this morning? And just take this next couple of moments to turn around and greet those around you. before you this morning, just with open hearts, Lord, just to give you glory and honor this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. 
This week, as I was just thinking about that song, just just the the power the name of Jesus has, uh, this this scripture came to came to my mind. Um, it's Philippians two nine and ten. Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every other name. That at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God our Father. Let's, let's just 
Let's just sing that, that last uh, chorus again. What a powerful name it is. What a powerful name it is. What a powerful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a powerful name it is. Nothing can stand against. What a powerful name it is. The name of Jesus. What a powerful name it is. What a powerful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a powerful name it is. Nothing can stand against. What a powerful name it is. The name of Jesus. The name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We praise you, Lord. be seated. Today we celebrate the third Sunday of Advent. We pause during this busy Christmas season in midst of all of the hostile bustle of the holiday to look back at the time of Christ's birth, the true reason for the season. We tend to get caught up in the chaos of life, but let's stop for the moment to focus on the gifts God gave us in his son, Jesus Christ, who came down from heaven to... to and took the form of a baby so we could have hope and joy and peace. The candle of joy reminds us of the unspeakable joy we have in Christ, the joy that comes from within. Now, there were in the same country shepherds living out in the fields, keep, keeping watch over their flocks by night. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone down, shone around them, and they were greatly afraid. Then the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good trends of great joy, which will be to all people. For there is born, for there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the, the Lord. And this will be the sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in swathering cloths, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was an angel, a multitude of a heavenly host, praising God, saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on, and on earth peace, goodwill towards men. Luke 2, 8, 14. It was no small thing that God chose Thank you. It was no small thing that God chose for the angels to announce the birth of Christ's child to the shepherds instead of the rich or the royal or the religious peace, religious highest priests and priests. The shepherds were considered to be among the lowest of citizens. Yet it was to these humble sh shepherds that the angels came to share great joy because the shepherds would truly understand you see mangers weren't what we often see in just deep pitch deep <laughs> excuse me the pitchens of christ's birth instead these feeding trots were made of stone they weren't comfortable but they were great for protection Bethlehem was well known for having some of the most perfect, unblemished lambs, perfect for sacrifices. And the, and, the and the priest would take the perfect lambs met for sacrifice. 
wrapped them tightly in cloths, and laid them in mangers to protect them. When the, angel, when the angels told the shepherds where, where they would find the Christ child, the shepherds understood and had great joy, unspeakable joy, because they knew, they knew, with, they knew what the cloth and the manger meant. This, that this baby was a perfect lamb of God. He was a Messiah whose life would be sacrificed for the sins of the world as the lambs who would been previously laid in the mangers were meant to be sacrificed for sin as well. This wasn't just a baby wrapped in slots, swaddling cloths, laying in a manger. This baby was God, perfect, sinless, holy, and humbling himself to the perfect sacrifice to recancel all the humanity back to himself. What better way to bring joy to the, to the world? Joy, unspeakable joy. Today we light the candle of joy. Father, thank you for giving us joy, unspeakable joy, which comes bursting forth because of our lives in you. This joy doesn't depend on circumstances or things that might make us happy. Instead, but instead, from the joy we have in you, because of you, the incredible gift of your son and your spirit, let us spread your joy around the world as we celebrate the gift of your son, the perfect lamb of God. Joy to the world. The Lord is come. Joy to the Lord. Joy to the world. The Savior reigns. Amen and amen. Amen, amen. Jessica, Michael, Jazz, stay here a sec. Come over here. And kids, you can be dismissed to work on your Christmas program. They're excited. You guys are going to have your hands full. So I, I just wanted to take this moment. A, a year or two ago, I spoke out at another young man. Trent was here, and I said, Trent... Out of all the people in the church, I've seen your faith grow most. Jessica, you're now at that point where I, that I saw the first day that you walked in this church and you walked by my office and you were cleaning the hallway and the Lord says to me, Troy, you tell her that she's not just here to clean the church. You tell her that she's here to be a part of the family. I'm here to tell you today that your growth went from right here to right here. And you would have never done that when you first came in here to stand here and read before the church. Amen? Amen. And your identity in Christ is not someone who cleans the church. Your identity in Christ is you're a child of the Most High God, that He's proud of you, that you're His daughter, and that you're training them well. Amen? You two listen to her. She's got a lot of good things to say. Amen? Amen. Amen. God bless you guys. See, the, the, the church is about discipling people. It's not about filling a chair and, and 500 people being in here. It's the people that God brings that we focus in on and we disciple them. Listen, when I was over here praying in tongues, and yes, I was praying in tongues, and the Lord said, Troy, I'm concerned about the hearts of men. Their hearts aren't in the right place. Troy, you can be busy doing all these things, but if you don't give me your heart for Christmas, I don't care what you're doing. I don't care that you're turning on the lights. I don't care that you're vacuuming. I don't care. If you don't spend time with me and give me your heart, you're missing the point of Christmas. God said, he sent his only begotten son to change the hearts of men.
preachers preaching about the hearts of men coming to Christ. You guys, a Sunday morning service can only change you for about 10 minutes. When you walk out of here, you're talking about, hopefully you're talking about the message that was given. But what about Monday morning? Was there enough said that Monday morning you're taking the gospel and the birth of Jesus Christ to the people that you work with? It's not enough. When I see problems in people's homes, when I see problems in the workplace, I open the word of God and say, how much time have you spent right there solving your problem? Solving your problem. I walked through some pretty tough things this week, and if it wasn't for this word, it wouldn't have solved the problem. And when the problem wasn't solved right away, my eyes were on Jesus, and I was not shaken. But when my eyes were, became off of Jesus, I got shaken. I, when, I get, when I get my eyes off of the word, I start evaluating. Well, let's evaluate this. Let's justify this. I, I was writing my, my sermon this morning, and, and God said, you, you really going to keep thinking about that, Troy, that, that problem? You really going to keep thinking about that? Because I already know the answer. I've already got it taken care of, but the enemy's keeping your mind busy, so you're not over here writing. See, the enemy wants to keep us busy. That's the number one thing that he does to get you away from Christ is keep you busy. When a marriage is destroyed, it's because he kept you busy. I know that my life has gotten better when I stand on the word. My life has gotten better when I stand on the word. And so... This Christmas, maybe it starts with Pastor Troy's heart. Maybe it starts with your heart. And maybe the things that we think are so important aren't really that important when you hand it over to God. See, because I believe that this Christmas, God wants to do something in your life that he's never done before. I believe that he wants to come in even stronger. And what you think you know, he wants to show you what he knows. What you think you know about life, he wants to teach you to live it a different way. I can tell whether a person's in the word of God right away by the way they handle their situation. I can tell. I can tell that the love of Jesus Christ is in a broken heart. I can tell when it's not. Because somehow, the God of all hope, Romans 15, 13 says, may the God of all hope fill you with joy. Fill you with joy. I had somebody give me this gift today. And it was joy. And what's cool is you can turn all these letters and it still says joy. You can turn the bottom Y and it still has a Y there and it says joy. You can turn the top and it still says joy. Whenever things get twisted, can you still have joy? When things get twisted, do you still have joy? Because, man, this thing does. just keeps spewing out joy. Hey, man, when the tornado hits your home, can you spew out joy? Thank you, God, that I wasn't destroyed in the tornado when my truck broke down. Thank God Gustavo was driving and not you, Marcella. You told me that because he was able to handle it. She didn't go, oh, man, my truck is broken down. No, she goes, thank you, Jesus, for saving my life. And she had joy. But the world twice tries to twist the joy right out of you. But you know what? It's Christmas time. Brady, it's Christmas time. And I get excited, Daniel, about Christmas because I start talking about Jesus. 
And when I start talking about Jesus, his very name changes the way that I think, changes Jordan the way that I act, changes the way I talk, Blake. Man. You guys have all heard it said, the best gift wasn't under the tree, it was on the tree. That's nothing new, you've heard that. And I'm, I'm amazed at how God does things. I mean, he doesn't do them the way that we think. When you think you got it figured out how God's going to do it, you better go back to your prayer closet. And sometimes we can't explain why God does what he does sometimes or allows to happen what happens. We had one of those cases this week. Couldn't, couldn't understand why this had to happen. And it was painful for a lot of people. But then when I went back to Jesus, here came the joy. And when I went back to Jesus, he started to answer the why. And he replaced it with joy. But when my eyes become depleted and my heart heads the wrong direction, I start to lose my joy. Luke chapter 1, Ryan, starting with verse 26. And, and I'm going to try to pick up a little bit where I left off last week. And, and most of these scriptures you guys have, have heard over and over before Christmas time. You, you've been there, you've read them, and, and you keep trying to find something new. But you know why you can't find something new sometimes? Because the word never changes. It is what it is and always will be. The story of Christ never changes. His birth never changes. His death on the cross never changes. His resurrection never changes. The story has been told over and over and over again. But still the hearts of men need to hear about Jesus. I'm amazed at how many people haven't heard about Jesus. Or don't know the depth of a relationship with Christ. I, I think that's what the beginning statement was all about. And it... It seems like God come out with guns a blaring when I started talking about the hearts of men. But Jesus sat around a campfire with 12 men. And he changed their hearts. He changed their hearts. And Peter didn't get it for a long time. Peter kept fighting things in the flesh. And it took Jesus becoming crucified before he understood So when you can't understand something and the pain is greater than what you can handle, go to the cross and think about that. Because I think when we get to the point of the cross, our problem becomes less and there starts to become an answer to the why. There starts to become an answer to the why. We're in a world that's shaken. We're in a world that's not going to go on forever. Let's we'll start here with this in Luke. Now in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And having come in, the angel said to her, Rejoice, highly favored one. The Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. But when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, and considered what manner of the greeting this was. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Leave that right there. That's okay, Ron. Nick, stop right there. When an angel of God comes to your house, that's not something that happens every day, but it could happen. Mary had fear. Remember in the scripture before, Zacharias had fear when Gabriel showed up? But what does Gabriel do every time? They take away your fear. He said, do not be afraid. He, he announces, do not be afraid. I'm here on God's behalf is basically what he's saying. So if you got a voice that's not telling you do not be afraid, then it's not from God. Because when God shows up, he announces, do not be afraid. You're going to be startled if you turn around and Gabriel's standing there. Sometimes we're startled. 
But when God's in the room, he'll announce to you, do not be afraid. And the scripture before it said, Mary, you're blessed among all other women. She's blessed because she's getting ready to carry our Savior. That God's picked you out, Mary, because you're a righteous woman and you're blessed. You're not blessed in the fact that man should worship you. You're blessed in the fact that you're going to carry the Savior because God's found you faithful. There's a difference and that scripture gets twisted. We would consider it blessed if we got to be with Jesus physically. I'm blessed. Every day I'm blessed that that he is here with me and that he does talk to me when I'm working. I'm blessed. Mary's blessed because she's carrying the Savior of the world. She was chosen for that task. And she did that task very well. And behold, you will conceive in your room and bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the son of the highest. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his father, David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And over his kingdom, there will be no end. That that kingdom has not yet come. That kingdom comes because it says it will be forever. That's in Christ's return when he sets up his kingdom with all of us. And he'll rule and reign with us. That kingdom will not end. When it talks about over the house of Jacob, that's referring to Israel. Jacob was known to be Israel. God is going to come rule and reign with the hearts of men again and walk with us. We're getting another chance on top of another chance on top of another chance. Then Mary said to the angel, how can this be since I do not know a man? And the angel answered and said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the highest will overshadow you. Therefore, also that Holy One is to be born, will be called the Son of God. Now indeed, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age. And this is now the sixth month for who her was called barren. Listen, this verse right here is right where I started this morning. When I opened my Bible to the, this morning, that's the first verse I read. I want everybody to say this. For with God, nothing is impossible. For that decision I'm making, nothing is impossible with God. For that sickness I have, nothing is impossible with God. For that thing I've been praying about, nothing is impossible with God. For that child I've been praying for, nothing has been possible with God. Do you get the point? God's not on mission impossible. He is the impossible. He can do the impossible. I hope Tom Cruise figures that out. (laughs) Or he's going to miss the mission. Science is going to run out. Science is going to run out. And then it's too late. Listen. When you have your joy taken from you, you need to go back to this verse and say, nothing is impossible for God. It's kind of funny, kids, when you're taking that final. You guys, ready? You say, Nothing's impossible with God. I can't do this, and I don't know the answer, but God, you do, so please help me. Nothing's impossible. Nothing's impossible for God. I could say that a hundred times walking in life, but doesn't that bring joy when you look at life that way? Does that bring joy? Woohoo! You guys knew that was coming. Verse 38. Then Mary said, Behold, the maid servant of the Lord, let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. Now Mary rose in those days and went into the hill country with haste to a city of Judea and entered the house of Zacharias and greeted Elizabeth. And it happened when Elizabeth heard the greeting of Mary that the babe leaped in her womb and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. Then she spoke out with a loud voice. What was she filled with before she spoke? 
What was she filled with before she spoke? The Holy Spirit, amen. Do you allow the Holy Spirit to fill you before you have a conversation? Do you allow the Holy Spirit to fill you before you speak? Because the words that she speaks in these scriptures are from the Holy Spirit. There's a reason why that the Lord came upon her, because she's about ready to prophesy. She's about ready to speak. Then she spoke out with a loud voice and said, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. But why is this granted to me that the mother... Listen, she already knew without Mary saying one thing. Look, the mother of my Lord should come to me. Elizabeth is announcing that in Mary's womb, there's the Savior. There's my Lord. I better drop to my knees and start worshiping. Is that not amazing how the Holy Spirit gave her that wisdom to speak that word? There's my Lord, Robert. Walked right in the door. For indeed, as soon as the voice of your greeting sounded in my ears, the babe leaped in my womb for joy. Wow. John, John is in his mother's womb, and the minute Jesus walks in, in the womb, he's leaping for joy. Listen, when you hear about the word of God, when you hear about the birth of Christ, do you leap for joy? Do you start to get excited? Do you want to pour out into someone's life? Do you want to help fill them up? Do you want to pour some joy on them, or do you want to give them your junk? Bleh. Take this. Listen to this negativity. Or do you want to give them joy? Talk about that. Blessed is she who believes, for there will be a fulfillment of those things which were told by her from the Lord. And Mary said, my soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoiced in God my Savior. You guys, don't take your eyes off Jesus, because man will fill you every time. Don't take your eyes off Jesus. Sometimes men don't mean to fail men. But it happens. That's why Jesus went to the cross to fix all that. Keep your eyes on Jesus and you won't lose your joy. Keep your eyes on Jesus and you won't lose your joy. For behold, henceforth all generations will call me blessed. For he who is mighty has done great things for me and holy is his name. And his mercy is on those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the Im imagination of her, their hearts. He has put down the mighty from their thrones and exalted the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and rich he has sent away empty. What does, what does your Christmas look like? What, what gifts are you guys going to give? What gifts are you guys going to give under your tree? Think about the gifts you've bought. Think about the joy that children have on Christmas Eve or Christmas morning. They come running out with excitement. But if we forget to celebrate the joy of the birth of Jesus Christ, we really haven't given our kids anything. Because those toys that we buy them will become old and pushed in the corner for another new one. They'll become broken. They'll rust away. We'll trip over them as parents in the hallway. Oh, yeah. But nobody's tripping over the story of Jesus Christ. And so that's why I ask, what does your table look like? Will there be prayer there and talk of Jesus around a Christmas dinner? Will there be laughter and joy in someone else's home because you gave? I encourage you guys to still reach. Remember last week I told you to take a plate of cookies to your neighbor or something that's just a good icebreaker? Knock on their door and say, Merry Christmas, have a plate of cookies. And then it opens the doorway to minister to their life or send them a card. 
sent him a card with scripture in it. But this, this is, I don't want to say the easiest, but this is the easiest time to witness to somebody because most people celebrate Christmas, but some people don't know the true meaning. So the celebration of Christmas opens a doorway for you to share what happened in the scriptures. Try and pull up that scripture in Genesis. It might take you a second. Genesis 3, 15, I think it is. And I'll, I'll tell you why I'm doing this here in a second. And I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your seed and her seed. And he shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel. When you study that scripture clear back in Genesis, it's showing you that God's going to use a woman to introduce the Savior of the world. That he's going to use Mary to give Christ life. That word seed, when, when he says there, there's a battle between God and Satan that's happening. And God's saying, He's going to bruise your head, and you're going to bruise his heel. But that seed that comes will come through a woman. The woman was deceived at the tree with the apple, and yes, Adam was just as big a part. So let's not get into that. This isn't a run woman down thing. I blame Adam for not being the man of the house. Amen? So don't, don't men, don't you dare take that scripture and go, see, he said it first. And I told you that before when I preached on that. When you read that, you know, we always picture that Eve's over here. Let's say this is, here, here's the tree. Eve's over here at the tree. And she's peeling this apple, right? Let's take this big, see, I was not going to get the small one. She was looking at the big juicy one. And, and we sat there and think that Adam was clear over there by that loaf of bread. No, he wasn't. He was right there with her. He was close enough he could have said, honey, don't, don't do it. But we leave Adam out of the room when Eve's committing the sin. No, Adam was in the room. But God said, because she took the first bite, I'll use a woman to reverse that. See, God always breaks the curse. He always breaks the curse. That's why he said, Peter, do you love me? Peter, do you love me? Peter, do you love me? He said it three times because Peter denied him three times. You know what? Yes. God always breaks the curse of sin and the curse of denial. And, and he broke it by asking Peter, do you love me? Because Jesus already loved him. Peter, you cannot do anything against me to make me not love you. Peter, you can deny me amongst men and I still love you. But Peter, do you love me? And I feel like God's asking you today, you know what, I, I, I know that you failed in those moments of your life. I know that you took a step backwards, but Troy, do you love me? I still want to use you, Jack. I don't care. Do you love me? Brian, do you love me? And, and, and you know how I know God loves you? Because he sent Jesus. In the sermon, it's over right there. That's a good point, place to stop. I know he loves you guys, and I know he loves me because he sent Jesus when he didn't have to. That, that, I, Misty, I can't explain it any better than that. And that's not me, that's God. But I cannot tell him how Jesus loves him any more than that, Brian. Because he came down here. To save us. And not only that, wasn't it cool how, how he just walked amongst everybody and loved on them? And he did things differently. Like his walk was differently. He did things differently. And, and man when, was expecting a king to show up in a different manner that just conquered and, and went at people and destroyed people. But remember what Jesus said? I didn't come into the world to what? Condemn it. I came to save it. And so if we're on a, a saved mission, 
then we're not kicking people when they're down. We're building them up. We're picking them up. We're not kicking people when they're down. We're, we're picking them up. And so, walk differently. Look how Jesus walked. Look how Jesus talked. Look how Jesus loved. Jesus was firm when it came to the word. He was firm when he said to follow my commands. But he taught with love and discipline together. It's not what you say, it's how you say it, right? And God was faithful in those moments. Turn to John chapter 1 there, Ryan. Yeah, let's do this Bible verse. That I, I was thinking the other, John, but this will work. Because you guys, every week that's in discipleship class and men and women of valor, here we go. Let's say this together. Here's your scripture verse. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. For without me you can do nothing. Now that's in the King James Version, but make sure you back up because I know we're teaching in the NIV Version, but you get the gist. Is that the first time you guys read that? I hope not. Jack, Sarah, I'm trying. Teach them. But that's your Bible verse for the week. But, but you guys, again, when we speak about the story of Christmas, it's, it, it is about staying attached to the vine so that we can bear fruit. Because apart from God, apart from Christ, we could do nothing. We're going to not share the gospel if we're apart from Christ. We're going to handle that situation differently if we're thinking in the flesh. But Jesus came. For God so loved you that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God loves you, each and every one of you. In the beginning was the word... And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was the beginning with God. All things were made through Him, and without Him, nothing was made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. You guys, listen. When it says the darkness cannot comprehend it, that's like the Pharisees not recognizing that Jesus was the Savior of the world. They could not see through what the law was teaching them. You've got to get away from the law and get to the Holy Spirit of what Jesus Christ is all about. The law has its place, but not without the Holy Spirit. Does that make sense? Jesus was the light of the world, is the light of the world. And he shines in the darkness, but, but man could not comprehend it. They wanted to live life in the flesh. And if you're not living by the Spirit, then you're not attached to the vine. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. This man came for a witness, to bear witness of the light that all through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light, which gives light to every man coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, and the world did not know him. Can you imagine? Think about that for a second. Think, put yourself in God's shoes for a minute. Jesus' shoes. He created you. He created each person, and when he got here, no one that he created except him. Not no one. A few, some did. But for the most part, we didn't walk as he walked. We didn't think as he walked, and he created us, and, and, and he had to live with that. that. That we didn't see him, and he created us. How, how hurtful to his heart must that be? That he gave us life and a life abundantly and sometimes we don't recognize who he is. But listen, you get to recognize who he is when you spend time with him. The only way you'll truly know what the will of God is in your life is if you're praying and seeking after him through his word. The only way you'll know 
And the only way you're going to have, man, you hear preachers and evangelists talk about joy, 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 joy to the world. But I promise you, the only way that you can have this kind of peace that Scripture offered is walk with Jesus, talk with Jesus, spend time with Jesus. I can't wrap it up in a box and hand it to you. Man, do I want to, Robert. I I want to, but I can't. But I can hand you that Bible up there and sit down and read it with you. And and there's going to be, oh, there's going to be things in that Bible that we disagree on sometimes. Come on, let's be real. Is there things that we disagree on in all the churches? But guys, we've got to stop fighting about it and agree that Jesus is the born Savior and that He died for our sins. We can all agree on that, that you can't get to heaven without Jesus Christ. And then we do our best to work through the rest of the pages. And we might work through the rest of the pages and we still might have some disagreement. But we're still to honor and love each other. We're still to go about things differently because Jesus walked differently. That doesn't mean we water things down. We're not here to water things down. And pastors are asked to make decisions on what they believe. And sometimes you hear me say, I'm not getting into that because I see what's going on. But what I am going to do is open John 3.16. I'm going to start talking about that. And I'm going to go home and pray in the spirit about that and get in my prayer closet and pray about that and ask and see what God tells me about that. Isn't that the way we should handle life? What, what if we all... Ha- in our problems, went home to our prayer closets and got down our knees. So that's the question I'm going to ask you today. If you're battling a problem and you're bringing it to me, have you prayed about it yourself? If you're battling a problem and you're bringing it to me, have you went to your prayer closet and prayed about it yourself? I'll pray with you, and I'll, I'll give you the best wisdom that, that God's given me. And if I don't know, I'll pray about it, and I'll study harder. But my question is, how often do we run to a believer and we haven't prayed ourselves? And we haven't prayed ourselves. Because ultimately, you don't need the person, you need Jesus to tell you what to do. Does that make sense? Is that fair? Don't rely on man for your answers. Rely on God. And God gave us an answer for our salvation in Jesus Christ. This Christmas, worship team, you come forward. Listen, as you go on in Scripture, John the Baptist was put in place. There, there Elizabeth was, was pregnant six, six months already when Mary was pregnant by the Holy Spirit. John, as I taught last week, was the messenger. Gabriel was a messenger, and now John the Baptist was becoming a messenger ahead of Christ to prepare the way. And just like in Isaiah chapter 40, verse 3, it talks about one who is crying in the wilderness, weeping over Jerusalem. God's still weeping over you today, and it's like one crying in the wilderness. It's like that whisper of the Holy Spirit that that comes rushing in on you. Don't deny God's voice in your life. And and what is God's voice going to do? It's going to be peaceful. It's going to bring joy. It's not going to cause fear. And it's going to line up with Scripture. Listen, you guys get those four. It's going to be peaceful. It's going to bring joy. It's not, you're not going to have fear, and it's going to line up with Scripture. If it's those four things right there, you're probably hearing from God. If it's condemning, probably not hearing from God. Because there's no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Amen. Guys, the Lord wants your hearts to walk with Him today, and He wants to have it so full of joy that we're not shaken over the things that really don't matter. 
What matters is that we all come together as a family. We all get out on the streets and we witness to people. We all shake somebody's hand and give them the love of Christ. Amen? That's preparing the way. God good 
Are you excited about what he's done in your life for you? Are you ready to tell the message? Are you ready to give the gift of life and be filled with all joy? So, Father, today I thank you, God. I thank you for your word, that it never changes. It is what it is and always will be. I thank you, Father God, for the gift of your son, Jesus Christ, who was born and died for us. And Lord, I pray you fill your people with the power of the Holy Spirit. I pray that the Holy Spirit just comes upon them stronger now, Jesus, that you just bless them with your spirit, Father. Bless them with the gifts of prophecy. Bless them with the gifts of tongues. Bless them with the gifts of healing. But bless them most of all with words about you, Jesus. We thank you for that. And I pray blessings now in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.